The lineup for the first heat in the first round of the men's 60 metres hurdles. Lane one not being used. Tullock of Great Britain in lane two. Baron de Sweden in three. Peters of Belgium in four. Corving, Holland in five. Lichtenegger of Austria in six. Lopez of Spain in seven. Fanna Germany in eight. The qualifying, the first three go through, plus the four fastest losers to the semi finals. Three false starts already. One against Tullock of Great Britain in lane two. One against Peters of Belgium in lane four. One against Corving of Holland in lane five. Very tense down there. The start so important in these short sprints. Five fights yeah. of hurdles. This time they get away and Tullock got away well. And it's Tullock on the far side. Also going well is Peters. But it's Tullock all the way up. Brilliant run by him. Fenner in second place and Corving third. I think those are the three qualifiers. And a personal best for Tullock by one tenth, 7.56. I was talking to him two days ago, he said, I've never been going better, and he's proved it. He got a very, very good start, in spite of having the threat of being disqualified for a second false start. He got away really, really well. And Tullock dominated this race. Yes, Fenner and Corving, the other two qualifiers, that's absolutely certain. And this run by Tullock means he's number three now on the British all-time list, or equal. Colin Jackson leads the way, Jarrett in second place, and he's equal with John Ridgin. Now the one, two, three confirmed. Tullock, 7.56. Fenner, 7.62. Corving, 7.66. All three certain to go through. Damien Greaves of Great Britain drawn on the inside in lane two in the second heat of the hurdles. Magos of Greece in three, Kazanov of Latvia in four, Kronenberg of Sweden in five, Thibaut of France in six, Bitze of Switzerland in seven, and Schillag of Hungary in lane eight. Igor Kazanov of Latvia, 4-4-3, three times European indoor champion. 7.56 is best this season. The defending champion, of course, and he is unpredictable, though. But it's going to be a fair baptism for Damien Greaves, the young Briton. He's only 20. Seventh in the European Under-23 Championships last year. Did quite well in the World Junior Championships. A little bit more work to do. Shilag, the Hungarian, quite useful on the near side too. Yes, well, Kazanov got away brilliantly and so did Kronenberg next to him. And on the near side is uh, Bitsy and Shilag. And here goes Kazanov. Kazanov gets there, so does Thibaut. We'll sort out the third qualifier in a moment. Um, it was very tight, but once again, 7.66. Not a particularly uh, good performance by Kazanov, but he can turn it on on occasions. You never know. Let's have a look uh, from the start. Greaves didn't get away at all well. He's left on the right of your shot. Kazanov led to the first turtle by Cronenberg, who hit that and uh, went back a little. Uh, Bitsy of Switzerland on the near side going well. So was Thibaut, the Frenchman. Thibaut's coming through here into second place, along with Schillag. They're the three. 7.66 the time. Just a little chance to look at the defending champion head-on. Drifting to the right side of his hurdle. In fact, he's hurdling the hurdle in the next lane. Now, theoretically, he should be disqualified. He hurdled a hurdle not in his lane, but uh, we'll see. Well, there's the result, Kazanov from Shilag, from Thibaut, and Damien Greaves, a personal best, 7.77. You can't ask more than that at the moment. We'll have to wait and see whether he's the fastest loser. And Senga of Belgium, drawn in the second lane in this uh, next heat of the hurdles. Melich next to him, then Schindelzors of Germany, Jarrett of Great Britain, De Los Santos of Spain, Pechonkin of Russia, and Poussin of France. Tony Jarrett already settled in the centre of the... Echelon, remarkable career. I'm not surprised he's uh, working over the 60-meter hurdles, though he's had so many problems with his start. He's failed to get to the last two major championship finals and wants to put it right. He gets away brilliantly in the center, and he's leading at the moment. Pechonkin of Russia on the near side, chasing him down, and so is Melic of Poland. Jarrett, Pechonkin, Melic and Nsenga. Nsenga was in there with a, with a chance, but Jarrett, 7.52, pretty good. Looked good, got away well, attacked the hurdles well, came off them well, and looked very relaxed. 
Just watch him attack here. Desenga on the right of your shot didn't get away well, but he closes down in the final stages. On the near side, Pechonkin, the Russian, was going well. Jarrett now starts to run away. Pechonkin and Melich, the two to go through by right. Let's have a look at uh, Tony. He's such a good athlete. 13 flat over 110 meter hurdles. We haven't seen him uh, at his very best, in the, as I said, in the last two major championships. Hasn't won the gold in the major championship. He's had so many silver medals, but that looked pretty proficient. The fastest time so far. Tony Jarrett, 7.52. Fastest time so far confirmed. Melich in second place. Pachunkin in third. They're the three qualifiers by right. The event in which we've got so much tradition and Tony Jarrett looking good. He is looking good, but fun funnily enough, he was introduced on a breakfast TV programme the other morning as Tony No Gold Jarrett. He's had a great career, he's won lots of silver <laughs> breakfast medals. breakfast TV for you. <laughs> That's right. And uh, I think after tomorrow, he'll be Tony One Gold Jarrett. I'm sure he's going to win that race. And he needs to, you know, he needs to go from being the perennial silver medalist to, to, to stepping up and winning a gold medal. Because he's had such an outstanding career. You know, he's won medals at every major championship. But unfortunately, Colin Jackson's been in most of them. And when Colin Jackson hasn't been there, there's been world records set but there's Tony hurdling extremely well in drawn in a very very good lane looks very aggressive sometimes has troubles with his start but I notice he's moved his starting blocks just back an inch or two which brings him onto the first hurdle just in just in the nick of time and that's obviously what his coach has worked out even though he did hit the first hurdle but Tony Jarrett looks very sharp he's, he's running extremely well between the hurdles he's always had a great hurdling technique and I didn't like the fact that he was uh, introduced as Tony No Gold, so I hope he's going to change that tomorrow. Well, hope, hopefully that might inspire him just a little bit, but this, it, it's smacked of a lot of authority, that performance. It did, it did. And, you know, Tony, Tony Jarrett is, a, is one of the, the nicest blokes you'd ever wish to meet. And I think he needs to prove the fact that nice guys can win. Men's 400 metres, we're going to turn to the semi-finals there. Solomon Wariso of Britain, fastest man indoors this year failed to make the semi-finals. What did you make of that? Well, that was a shock. He was the fastest man in, in the world this year, and it looked as though he, you know, he could really could just take the gold medal. Uh, he'd been training in America. He came back, I thought, rather late, maybe suffering from a little bit of jet lag, but a very disappointing performance in the first round. I mean, to get knocked out in the semi-finals, all right, but to get knocked down in the first round, because usually the first round, you're just waking up and you can get through, but mm. sadly, he didn't make it. But Sean Baldock's now into the semi-final. He's got a chance. OK, we'll see Sean in action. He's going in the first of the semi-finals of the men's 400 metres. The first three go into the final. The final takes place tomorrow. 400 metres, two laps of the track. The breaking point at the beginning of the home straight after the second bend. going to be quite a scramble with six in this at the breaking point. Baldock says he doesn't like to lead, but he's certainly got to attack. Yeah. Always a very rough race. Smooth starts. Baldock's gone quickly, but even quicker on the outside is Maschenko. And Baldock going fast down the back straight. Closing on uh, Podobransky, and he's run a good first two bends, and he's in the right place coming off the bend. Makowiak of Poland's there, and Mashenko leads. Makowiak in second place, Baldock is third, and sticking in there, the first three go through. The Czech, Podobransky, in fourth place, and still he's in a final qualifying position. Can he hang on there? Maschenko coming home in front. Makowiak in second, and Baldock, only 21, goes into the final. Tremendous run. And one or two injury problems since he was a junior. He's through that now, and the confidence is flowing. He really has looked very composed and organized in the first two rounds of this championship. He's just checking on his position to make sure everything's all right. It's under control. Maschenko wins. And Baldock qualifies in third place, just behind Makowiak. Watch Baldock. He's very cool about all this. 
he looks around light and left. Unfortunately, you can't see it on that close-up. But Maschenko looks to be the favourite. Success over the first 200 metres does so much to determine the final outcome. And uh, really, De Silva of Portugal has gone off very quickly and he's overtaken France of France at the moment. They'll break as they come into the home straight for the first time. Right on the outside, Saba of Italy going well too. And these uh, breaking across in the lead. Saba leads. Uh, Silva in second place. 21.41. Over 200 metres, it's very quick. The Spaniard Andres in third place. Behind him is uh, Elwadi of Austria and then Zubak of Poland. And I tell you, Saba, the 400-meter hurdler, has really gone out so quickly, and he looks very, very strong. It was a fast first 200 meters. He's coming through to take this. Looks over his shoulder. He's there. The silver in second place being run down at the moment. Is he going to hang on? Yes, he does just. And Schubach of Poland sneaks through into third place with a late charge. 46.48. Slightly slower than the first uh, semi-final, but Saba looked very, very strong. Sean Baldock, the latest on that 400 metres production line and worth his place in the final tomorrow. Yeah, he is. He's run extremely well. He's, he's, he's qualified. He worked very hard in that semi-final there to get through. And I was pleased for him because, as I said earlier, this is the kind of championships which, for young lads like, like him, this is important. But I'll tell you, the outdoor championships, that's where Britain will come over. And whichever Britain is the top outdoor 400 metre runner, will win the European Championships in the summer. So, uh, What about those big guns at the moment, the likes of Ewan Thomas and, and Jamie Balch and so on? And Roger Black Roger and Mark Black Richardson. Well. I mean, they're all getting ready in different ways, training in America or training in South Africa or training in Australia and getting ready for the outdoor season in a different manner. But they've already won medals at major championships. They didn't really need this one. And, um, but, I mean, he's done well, Sean Baldock, and it's good for him because he'll be possibly one of the relay squad for the summer. And that'll be another edu part of his education process. And it, it, athletics is like learning. You've got to step up the ladders, and he's stepping up the next ladder. Big step up for him tomorrow. <laughs> it will be. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Best of luck to him tomorrow in the 400 metres final. Before we go, uh, the women's 400 metres semi-finals. We're going to see the last of those. And the last semi included Grip Breuer, fastest indoors in the world this year. The final heat of the women's 400 metres, Parika of uh, Croatia, drawn on the inside, Bevis of France, then Rushkina of Russia, Grit Breuer, the defending champion, drawn in the fifth lane, and Menina of Lithuania on the outside. Two laps of the track, only the winner to be sure to go through, and Breuer, fastest uh, in this field by a long way. Not well away, though, but now starting to open out a little chase by Rushkina. Very tough qualification. Menina of Lithuania has already been run down. And Breuer now coming off that bend for the first time will try to get to that uh, lead as they cut down onto the inside lane, and she does just that. Breuer leads. Roshkina in second place. In third place is Beavis. And then uh, uh, Menina uh, trailing uh, behind uh, Perica. Well, Breuer, doping suspension between 1992 and 95 former European champion, underwent some difficult times, was proved to be cheating, has been now reinstated after serving the uh, suspension, and she's coming back now to take her place in the final quite comfortably at 51.84. Well, that's today's action. The highlights, the headlines, Asher Hansen gold, Jason Gardner silver. What would be your big hopes for tomorrow? Well, that's been a great start. And I'm just wondering if there's a bookmaker shop around here. See if I can go along and have a bet, because I think we might win three, possibly four gold medals tomorrow. From what John direction, then? Jonathan Edwards in the, in the triple jump, because you're not going to let Asia Hansen take the headlines. Um, Julian Golding in the 200 metres. Tony Jarrett, I think this is going to be his day now. And I'll have a little outsider on John Mayo, and I hope he doesn't let me down. <laughs> there have been disappointments in the qualifying stages, in the heats and so on, but it, it's turning into a good British-European indoor championship, this. Yes, it is, and I mean, it, and so it should, because Britain are the, you know, fourth best athletic nation in the world when it comes to the World Athletics Championships and the Olympic Games. We always do extremely well there. So the European Championships, we should be, you know, we should be pretty high up. We should get medals in championships like this. We have got goals already. We've got an indoor world record. We may get another one tomorrow. And I mean, Britain is coming back. It's always been strong in, in, in athletics. 
That's good. The season off to a pretty good start. Let's just underline then. Asher Hansen, gold in the women's triple jump, plus an indoor world record. Jason Gardner takes silver in the 60 metres. And you can see all tomorrow's action in Sunday Grandstand. Tomorrow afternoon, we're on the air at uh, 1.30 BBC Two tomorrow. Live Challenge Cup Rugby League, St Helens against Warrington. An epic confrontation today, uh, won by Castleford, and that promises much tomorrow. European Indoor Athletics again, and the final from Battersea, the Guardian Direct Cup. That's all in Sunday Grandstand tomorrow, 1.30 BBC Two. From Brendan and me, it's goodbye for now. Sue Barker will be with you tomorrow. To, uh, some from late yesterday evening and there was British interest in both the men's and women's 200 metres. We're going to start with the women's and the heat involving Britain's Donna Fraser. The commentator are David Coleman, Paul Dickinson, but first Stuart Story. Donna Fraser, the British record holder at 200 metres, drawn in the fifth lane of this uh, final heat of the women's 200 metres. A real opportunity to qualify. Deer of France is outsider here. Former World Junior Championship finalist. She's got Melanie Paschke of Germany, the 60-meter champion here inside in lane four. Shanidza of Georgia runs in three, and Meyer of Belgium runs in lane two. That's the champion over 60 meters. Very impressive performance. A best of 22.71 this season. The first two to go through, plus the five fastest losers, as this is the final heat. Well, if uh, Donna were unable to get into the first two, she must do better than 24.24, and I think we would expect that. Good lane. Pasca already up on Donna, but Donna's long rangey legs will take her into the final stages. Pasca leading at the moment. Fraser in second place quite clearly with Dia, the French woman, on the outside. And Fraser coming through into second behind the 60-meter champion. Pasca dominant in this race, and now Donna Fraser working her way into the semi-final. She's got to hold on. She's got to hold on. She does. She's in second and qualifies by right. The winning time quick, 22.88. And uh, Donna Fraser of Great Britain is through to the semi-final. At the time, unofficially, 23.2. Well, there's the result. Pashka and Fraser, the two qualifiers from the last heat. Alan Condon going for Great Britain. Sale Harrier in the first heat in the first round of the men's 200 metres. He's drawing lane five, a good draw for him. And right on the outside is uh, Kevin Widmer of Switzerland. He too has got a good draw, and those two are the two fastest on paper in the field. Just the first two go through, and Condon got a brilliant start, absolutely flying from the blocks. Taking Widmer, the Swiss on the outside, he's really gone for it. Also going well is uh, Jose of Spain, and Widmer has been blasted by Condon. There's a fine run by the sail area, Widmer coming back. And they're going to be the two qualifiers. Condon wins easily, 20.87. Vidmer goes through with him. That was one off the blocks. Very, very convincing. Julian Golding of Great Britain has had an outstanding start to the season. He heads the world rankings in the 200 metres at 20.46. This is the first round of that event. He's got August of Turkey drawn on the inside in lane two, lane one not being used. Trill of Spain in three, Fedorif of Russia in four, Alexopoulos of Greece, the Greek number three, in the fifth lane. But he has a good draw. The outside lanes are more satisfactory, and the higher the seeding, the tendency is that they get the outside lanes. Trull of Spain comes from Valencia. He's at home. But uh, Golding, exceptional, had a fantastic anchor leg to secure the World Championship 4 by 100 meter bronze medal for Great Britain in the World Championships in Athens last season. It's the first two go through by right to the semi-final. Ogus, Trill, Fedorev, Alexopoulos and Golding. Heat two of the 200 metres for men. Yes. Good start, away brilliantly, Golding on the outside. 
being chased down by Alexopoulos in the back straight, but Golding's very strong in the final stages. Fedora for Russia going well at the moment. Remember the first two go through by right, and Golding a little bit of work to do now, but he's so strong off the bend, and now he starts to ease down. It's brilliant. In second place was Alexopoulos, then Fedora, but 20.90 with some considerable ease. Golding goes through to the semi-final. He got away well, headed into the back straight, but uh, his tendency this early part of the season has been to really work off the final bend. And watch him do just that, because Fedora, if anything, is slightly ahead. Now he unwinds. And Golding totally and utterly in control. That's a wonderful piece of running. And eases down to 20.9. Relax too. Look at the face. Total and utter control. He's the world number one, and he's out to prove it. 20.90 for Golding. Alexopoulos, 21.15. They're the two qualifiers by right. Great Britain's Doug Turner goes in this final heat of the men's 200 metres. He's got a tough act to follow, having seen his teammates Alan Condon and Julian Golding qualify very well indeed for the semis in winning their heats. Right on the outside, Marc Foucan of France, French indoor champion. Right on the inside, it's Bonello of Malta, who uh, I suspect might find the company he's got in heat seven a little bit tough. Just two to go through, plus a single fastest loser to qualify for the semi-finals. Full lineup is Benello, Director of Switzerland, Yankov of Bulgaria, then Doug Turner from Cardiff. One of the fastest ever British athlete over 200 meters. And right on the outside, Marc Foucan of France. Unlike Doug Turner's last appearance of the European Indoor Championships where he had a terrible lane draw for him. He's quite a tall athlete. He was right on the inside and didn't qualify. This time, like Condon and Golding, he's got a favourable lane draw out in lane five. Yes, boss. And Doug Turner now chasing... Kukan of France, he's going well at the moment. Uh, two inside him, Jankov of uh, Bulgaria and Derivector of Switzerland going well. But Doug Turner looking comfortable around the top end. Derivector of Switzerland going well, but the big man from Cardiff just looking around him. He can't afford to ease down. He's going to come through and win this one. That three British winners safely through to the semi-finals. The time, 21.